Hi. First, remember to, uh, if you have a question, ask for a mic, wait for it, and look at the camera at the front. Don't cross in front of the camera. And well, now we are going to hear a talk about how to enhance Linux power management using less what from a Latin America community manager at Intel, Sulamita Garcia. Gracias, buenos dias. English, sorry. <laughs> uh, hi, good morning to everyone. It's kind of high, the volume. And hi to everyone watching the streaming. Thank you very much for the organization for putting together this, this conference. Uh, before joining here, I was hearing a lot of things and it's really amazing their jobs. And thank you for accepting me here. I feel almost joined a secret society. <laughs> and by the clapping, I thought there would be some kind of quote, the morning quote or something. It's okay. So I work for Intel and I represent many of our open source projects developed at Intel Open Source Technology Center. And I'm here to talk to you today about one of those projects that is related to uh, enhancing the power management in Linux. I think we all can agree that we still have a long way to go on this area. Power man management in Linux is not uh, our best thing. So uh, power has become a new focus area in the industry. So because it's uh, also related to the questions about the environment, the global warming, how, many, uh, how much the computers has spread on our lives and uh, around the world, and how many energy are we expending on that. It uh, demands also a lot of uh, costs in the, in the data centers, in our lives, and uh, whatever. There is a lot of computers, there is heating, there is uh, energy expanding. So it has become, this become a new concern on this. Uh, how this can affect you? If you, save, uh, if you have a better power management system in uh, your Linux, you can save uh, money in your electrical bill. And this might be not a huge difference in uh, one house who has one computer or so just a few computers. But when it comes to data centers who have thousands of hundreds and this this come this can matters a lot. <coughs> it can make your battery battery last longer. Uh, whatever whoever have a laptop running Linux know that that's kind of an issue, and of course it's more fr uh, environment friendly. So uh, less what it's actually a project for, uh, fostering a lot of other projects. It's a also, it's more like a community. Uh, one year ago, when this project was launched, it was pretty much around just one, two, uh, less what, who started to raise the attention, the awareness about how, which applications were expanding most of our energy around Linux. When you're running Linux, there are some applications that can use like 30% of your battery, just that application alone. So. And they started to, uh, to they started to build a community around that, and everybody that joined that community brought a new vision, a new perspective about where could we save uh, power. So we started to ha we started to have um, uh, other tools besides uh, uh, power top. Everybody knew a trick, knew a tool, have some tips about software development, so about configuration of some applications. And so it, it all came together and there is a lot of guidelines, a lot of documentation. Uh, and it's all open source, it's all open documentation, it's open source, so there is a lot of distributions that just go there and take the pat patches and <coughs> some dis in, and some projects who also go there and take the patches and add to their applications. So uh, on the beginning, there was this application power top made by Arjun, Arjun von Ri Arjun von something. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too many weird names. <laughs> And this, this is a quite simple application. There is just some dependencies. And what this, it does is to show you how your CPU are, is running and what are the most, the, 
the applications that are taking most of their energy on your system. So, and also there is this tiny area we keep telling you tips that you can change your configuration. So for example, there is this feature on the kernel that if you uh, enable it, it might save you a lot of uh, energy, a lot of uh, your batteries resting longer. You can set this configuration for your wireless to enter in an idle state when you're not using that also is going to save your, uh, your battery. And there is options to do that uh, to, to do that for you, but that was the simple thing. And so when they started to look at, there was some applications that very quickly be started to be always on the top applications uh, wasting your, your battery. So after that, they kind of created, no, oh, okay, so that they applied a lot, they worked a lot of the kernel they applied a lot of patches, they fixed a lot of things, and they had a great, uh, a great report from saving energy with the kernel. But we all know there's just, uh, the, the kernel is not the, the whole system. So they started to notice a lot of uh, applications that started to show every time on the top of the, the applications consuming most of your, of your battery and some applications like uh, Pigeon can is one of can uh, of those who can spend like 30 percent of your battery. So if your battery uh, remains like five hours, just uh, the the guy running alone is going to consume more than one hour, more an hour and a half. Firefox, XOR, Gnome are always the top on the list. So they started to working with them to create patches, so Pigeon, for example, the last, the last version, <coughs> the last version has, uh, has a lot better power uh, management than the, the previous one, because everybody started to notice it and uh, joined it to fix it. Firefox also is receiving a lot of efforts on that and so other, other uh, applications. But how can we do that? for new applications, how we can create this new mentality. Uh, the, the developers uh, responsible for this project last words, they told me that, uh, they explained me the whole story about that because we get to use the, the, the fact that we have a lot of uh, processor, uh, we have a lot of power availab available and we don't think anymore on the strains to, uh, that used to be on the beginning of the industry, that they have very small memory to program, they have very small power, processor power. <coughs> and so we just use those resources without any, any further thoughts. And so we became a lot of uh, consuming energy. So how can we change that? Just thinking on how can we better manage the power while we are developing. So there is a lot of few tricks that we can follow that is going to to make this uh, to make the development more power friendly. Oh, by the way, if there is any questions, I'm totally hoping that people just just join. I don't know if I have content for a full hour, so I will be really glad if everybody comment, make questions, anything. So for example, everybody feels better when they have a full eight hours of sleep instead of having two hours and then wake up for one hour and have more two hours and waking up for, other, uh, for another one hour. So it's the same thing when we charging uh, the battery on where you're saving power. The longer you can stay on the recharging state, on the idle states, the better. So if you can put this all together instead of queuing in, in, in between is better for your power consumption. Always try to go wide, uh, finish all the tasks and go idle on your applications is also going to, uh, to help to save powers. Instead of trying to wake up any devices, trying to turn it off the ones that are not being used. They are also going just to be wasting energy without no, uh, without needing. Uh, create longer idle times between activities, again, trying to always 
uh, put activity together to have a, be a bigger idle time. Avoid pulling. There is a lot of applications that keep pulling the processor all the time to just make questions or just to check for status or for new data. And sometimes it's just too much. And every time that you pull the, the processor, it needs to wake up and start to wasting more power, more energy. And so I'm going, I have another slide on that. Uh, try to group the timers. There is another slide on that. Use large buffers, like trying to do a lot of, uh, get a lot of data, or uh, for example, for a video, try to get a lot of uh, bigger buffer for video so you can process everything once at once and go idle right after that. Uh, optimize the, the sleep. That is kind of recharging without interruptions, but try to, uh, yeah, that's the same thing, sorry. And be aware of high level languages. They are very useful for creating quickly applications but most of them are not very power optimized. So try to, uh, every time that you can choose the uh, runtime environment, choose a better version, check if there is some other uh, patches that can provide a better power uh, management. So there is applications that keep pulling for something that is not really necessary. So for example, there are some applications that can check if the mouse mo moved once in a, uh, once every second, there are some applications that can check if the volume and change ten times per second, and for example, checking if there is data on the pipe like uh, uh, ten thousand times per second. So, is that really necessary? Can we optimize that? So it's uh, it's okay that we want to respond as fast as the data have have come, but sometimes probably some delay can be accepted in order to save better energy. Uh, and group it, grouping timers is kind of the same thing. If you need to use timers, try to do that all at once and then go to idle uh, the most of time that you can. It's much better than to having, uh, having them uh, all spread in the, in the time. Uh, try a race to idle is like trying to uh, speed the maximum of your processor, try to use it the maximum because it's better to use uh, to use the, uh, the processor at maximum for some time and go, then go to idle. They try, then try to use like just half of speed because that's not going to save any power actually. So a CPU consumes like 34 watts in full speed in 24 and half speed in just one when idle. So if you can uh, if you can execute every all instructions at full speed and then go to idle is much better than where processing it longer at half speed and then going to idle. <coughs> so an, an example here. Uh, so there is a lot of documentations about how to put more, uh, to have those tricks and how to create a man, uh, mindset of development that's more intended to, to have the power consumption in mind when you're writing code. But also there is a lot of tools uh, designed to check where can you, can, you, uh, can you do better. So for example, I'm going to present some of those tools available on Less Watch. One of them is the Battery Life Toolkit. It's related to check how is your laptop battery going on. It's a framework that has a lot of uh, workloads, so you can check how your battery is performing when you're reading, when you're uh, browsing, when you're seeing some, when you're uh, doing tasks related to media, when you're developing. So they have a lot of uh, workloads preset that make a lot of tests and collect a lot of numbers on your battery to check how is your battery going, if there is anything you might check before it goes worse. 
And with that, we can also check how is uh, the software going into uh, manage, managing the, the battery life. Uh, there is the power policy manager, who can, uh, which you, there is a, a some, uh, some user modes, or you can create your own user modes, and they are related to tasks where you can uh, enable or disable or power off some applications. So for example, when you're on a airplane, you don't need to, uh, to uh, you actually don't have to, uh, shouldn't power off your radio, your Bluetooth, your other, your wireless uh, cards. So we, when you go to this kind of user mode, it's uh, all going to turn it off for you. In presentation, you don't need the screen saver, uh, and there is some events activate, like when the CPU is overheated, there is some actions that it can took to, to decrease the, the heating. Priorities and, uh, and, and everything. Uh, this is more related to Intel graphic drivers. There is a lot of uh, features included on the chipset, uh, this is just to have uh, to give you one idea that there is a lot of uh, features already included on the hardware that they are working to see how much can they can they save and there are some of them already included on the drivers but there are some of them who still need some development work so if anyone is interested on this, in that area it's a good way to to check. Uh, there is a lot of other projects. Uh, some of them are really related to kernel development. So I would not go there because I'm not a kernel developer, so I don't quite feel comfortable to talking about them. But there is some of them. There is just to create a quality of service related of power, so application would be developed having this in mind. There is the tickless idol who try to avoid pooling and try to put uh, to aggregate the pooling without you having to to understand too much about that. That's all in the kernel, so it's uh, it's already preventing and uh, grouping better the pooling. Uh, there are uh, performance and power. There are the the, uh, the patches for the ACPI to have a better power management. And I think I, spe I spoke too fast because that was, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I, I was expecting that uh, some of you were more into this, uh, were already knowing some of this, this stuff. But my, my, pretty much my job here was to show you that this can be interesting for Debian, but also that the Debian community would be really interesting for this project. Because when it started one year ago, it was just about less watts. All this other documentation, all other tools, all other stuff, were for people who joined the less watts website and created more tools and created more documentation and tricks. So everybody who joins that community brings another another item, another perspective, and this is, have become a very, really big uh, resource website. So if you want to check that, and if I can uh, answer any question. Uh, regarding the um, high uh, level um, um, development tools, you said which uh, those kind of tools should be avoided? Is it why why high level development uh, language should be avoided? Oh, because uh, because they they I mean, they weren't exactly develop designed to be to be worried about power consumption. So they they pre they most of the time they don't have the best uh, performing. They are they are like. Uh, using all the bad, bad things that you should not use in development, like pulling off the time, like not using full resources and not racing to idle. So uh, there is a lot of people working on many, uh, many languages trying to improve that. But when you use uh, more uh, high-level languages, they are more tend uh, they tend to use 
more resources without caring too much about the power. Just to be sure to start a good flame war, do you have the names of the bad guys? <laughs> well, in top of my mind, Java. <laughs> Pretty obvious. <laughs> Hi, yeah. You, you talked uh, <coughs> a little bit about the, uh, the power policy management. Uh, I wanted to ask something about um, the tools that you have to control those different um, <coughs> sort of modes, like you mentioned the airplane mode. Uh, so, you, as I understand it, you can switch between different layers. So, for example, when a device enters the airplane, it, <coughs> it would turn into the airplane mode and be layered across, say, like the default policy manager. Um, I wondered about what tools a developer would have to control which specific um, mode was enabled on the, on the device. I mean, how does that happen? Is it like a debus call through the to the application? Uh, 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 I saw mentioned on the on the Less Was site something uh, uh, PPM tools w is mentioned. Mm. Uh, c can you explain a little bit more about that, or if you know about that? PPM as Power Policy Management, uh, if I record correctly. What I understood is that uh, some of the things that this application can do, it's like turning off the devices that you don't need and also turning off the applications that might be using those devices because they were going to try to wake up the devices and we're going to keep pulling to see when the device is going to be turned it on. But I think that's like I started a uh, project and so the where they can go can be much uh, broader than uh, much bigger than that. But what I understood was that I don't know if that answered your question. Oh, I, I just made a check on my laptop very quickly about uh, battery life toolkit and power policy management. In Debian, we don't have any of those. So I'm quite ashamed to see that we don't have done any of those. And well, that's I where I'm here. I I'm here to ask you guys to package that to Debian. Yeah, I, I think this. <laughs> These are definitely things someone should pick up and package. And if there are application managers in the, in the room, if you have to suggest things to your new maintainers to package, please suggest them to s package this stuff instead of the gazillions um, <laughs> editor or mail reader or whatever crap you want to work. Please. Oui. <laughs> Translated to. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But it, that that there is something. Uh, when, while I was preparing this slide, there was something that I I need to report back to the developers because there is some information missing on the website. So, any. Any other suggestion should go to the mailing lists or the, the developers too. Yeah, sorry for stealing the, the microphone. I think this is something we are, I'm not aware of any project inside Debian to work around this, all this stuff. We have a lot of things to deal with battery life, processor. I, I, I checked, I have tons of stuff installed on my laptop. I don't really know which one is useful, which one is useless. We have no group working on that, and again, if there is an idea of a team or whatever to work on this in Debian, that would be definitely a good idea. I don't want to take the lead of that. <laughs> To extend this a bit further, uh, a lot of people don't realize exactly how important this is to lots of people around the world. For example, in Iraq, the Iraqi people uh, can only have about three hours of electricity per day before the generators are turned off. If you were able to charge a car battery and then 
use that car battery to keep your computer system alive. You could actually have your computer working 24 hours a day if it managed its power properly. There's a lot of people who live off the grid. That means they don't get electricity for a very small amount of money because it's produced by a hydroelectric plant. They pay a lot of money for their electricity because it's generated by generators where you have to run them by gasoline or people who actually pedal a bicycle to generate the electricity. Every time you cut the electricity usage down, it's less pedaling they have to do. I, I forgot to mention, this is just to start some flame war. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you guys saw, like two months ago, Zandros reported that they applied to mobbling and they saved like 25% of their battery life. It's huge. Like if you get if you get just four hours on those small netbooks, you get an extra hour just for applying the software patches. And uh, what that, that means, that means that they applied mobbling on their base and they saved, but actually it's the same thing running on mobbling that is uh, the same patches that went to mobbling for better power consumption are based on the last watts uh, project, so it's uh, so let's see how much Debian can, can do. Well, anything else I think someone want to comment on? No? So I also brought a lot of t-shirts. Mm. Uh. And I hope that was just a highlight. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I could, I w I'm not able to, de the, to deliver much deeper te uh, technical details about the kernel development and everything. But I, I hope you to see you guys around the project. I hope to see the packages around uh, Debian and to have you guys on the project. Thank you.